slight difference. I think text adventure sort of harkens back to dungeon and um, adventure, the original um, sort of two games that that created the the medium. Um, they they sort of, the, the the phrase text adventure to me sort of symbolizes the treasure hunt, the lonely adventure, um, the you know just the very um, the, 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 what we call the, per, the, 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 the PC, um, the primary character, um, is not really anybody. You know, he has no emotions, no, you know, no, you know, no makeup whatsoever. I mean, it's just, it's you, the player. And so that really, to me, is text adventure. Whereas interactive fiction goes a little bit differently. Um, we have games that are in, you know, you know third person, first person. Um, the, the PC, if you say examine me when you start the game, will actually give you a, a, a description of yourself. You may be a female, you may be an alien, you may be a, you know, a, a, a something a, other than a nondescript person. And then your motives as that, that makeup is known becomes apparent throughout the game. And the game sort of focuses on pros on traditional scripting, meaning uh, I'm in this scene, the scene has this motivation. To get to the end of the scene, I have to do these things. And then when I do those things, I move on to the next scene. And the stories have an arc, just like a normal set of, normal novel might have an arc. Um, they have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, there's you know a climactic scene at the end of the game that does something um, interesting. That is interactive fiction to me. And I think there's a, there is a difference, but it also can overlap. Competitions or, you know, we have the, the IF art competition um, or we have these one-liner competitions or, you know, the best opening scene of a game competition. Um, and people who build tools. I mean, Graham Nelson's building... Um, I think it goes back a long way. I mean, this is personal, but I grew up with an older brother who loved logic puzzles. Um, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but the but the puzzles that listed like eight different sentences of facts, and you had this three dimensional grid where you had to figure out through this list of facts where you know, like Jane lived in the red house and had the you know, the, the Cocker Spaniel and, you know, and then Joe lived in the blue house and had the, uh, you know, the, 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 the wiener dog or the dachshound, um, those kinds of things and, and, and other types of puzzles and logic things that my brother got me interested in. And, and I think that triggered something in me. And I, I think throughout my, my school, my high school career, I mean, I think geometry was something that I just sort of, you know, absorbed instantly because it was all about, thinking logically and, and, and taking a set of rules and putting them together in a certain way, um, solving um, theorems and, and, and everything. And then the kicker was in 10th grade, I was practicing indoors um, for the baseball team. Um, I wasn't on the baseball team, but I was trying to get on the baseball team. And it was raining outside, and um, we were using the rubber hardballs that you use, and we were practicing the halls, bouncing them off lockers and whatever. And uh, I, the ball got by me and went into this little room with a couple of paper terminals. Well, there was two guys sitting on the paper terminals. One was playing the original dungeon um, on a paper terminal, and the other one of the other guys was playing adventure on the other paper terminal. And these were old, you know, 110 baud, 300 baud, uh, dial-in, coupler modems to the mainframe, uh, in the, 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 the main office of the Milwaukee public school system. And uh, I never went back to baseball practice, and I never pursued another sport. I spent every free second of my time in the rest of high school near a computer. Um, some of that time was doing IF stuff. Some of that was just learning how to code. Um, but it it basically was a, 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 a lightning strike. Um, and I don't know if my interest in, in interactive fiction and promoting it and making it wider is just because it happened at a, at a certain time of my adolescence or, you know, late adolescence, 
or if it uh, if it was a part of the logic puzzle um, thing that I had as a younger kid, um, I think my brain just gets it. It just it just grasps it. I love to read. I love to write. Um, I'd love to code, uh, and I think that and I and I and I see this sort of this combination of all of these things sort of coming together in this one place, and it's and it just it sparks a passion. And, um, and I, and, and like it with anybody else with a passion, you want to share it. And I think that's really what I'm all about is I, I have this passion. I've had it since I was, um, I've had this passion since I was 15, 15 years old, 16 years old, and I'm 43 now. Um, and obviously there was a period of time where I didn't pursue it because there were, there was no internet and there was no, um, Usenet news groups. Um, so the period between like the, the, you know, the all, all through the eighties, I, I played Infocom games, but I didn't certainly have a, a chance to write any. And then, you know, in the nineties, I, I found out about TADS and I bought a copy of TADS and I tried writing code, um, uh, in TADS, but I found it a little, little cryptic and a little difficult. I probably wasn't as a skilled of a programmer at that point. And then Usenet came around and I saw, I found Inform and, 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 and from there on, I, I just been an active member of the community since like 96 they're doing it themselves. And, and I think a good example of that is every once in a while, we, we, there's a blurb on Slashdot um, about the competition or about something going on in the IF community. And if you read the responses, the bulk of them are like, oh yeah, I remember that. Or, oh, this is cool. I never saw this before. And then there's a handful of people that will say, this is ridiculous. Give me my you know first person shooter and make this go away. But overall, I think the outside community views IF as a as a neat thing. It's just you know they choose either to be involved or not be involved. Um. Understand what Mimesis is, and and you know when you're playing a game, you want to be you know into it, and not constantly woken up from you know the interaction uh, interaction with the story. So, um, but I think people coming. Good writing. Uh, I think uh, more than anything, prose wins game, wins the competition. Um, and I, I think prose first. Um, I think uh, there's a uh, a continuity that probably is a second place um, thing that will win you a competition. And then I think third. Fair puzzles uh, will win you votes. And then after that, it actually becomes negative votes. Um, poor prose, poor coding, meaning you haven't tested well enough. Uh, puzzles that are difficult, guess the verb puzzles, where you don't really give a clue to the game player how to solve something, and it's really an obscure solution. Those things actually will detract from a game. You could have actually the best written game and have some uh, like one or two puzzles that were extremely difficult and uh, unfair, we call it, and those will actually lose many votes because of that. Whereas a game that has fewer puzzles and is extremely well written and extremely well coded will win a competition. A good example of that is Photopia, had, had, didn't have any puzzles, and it was extremely well written and, and, and it was extremely well presented. Some of those things stifle innovation. I think mazes are fine. Um, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna get ten-year-olds uh, or twelve-year-olds or eighteen-year-olds involved in IF for the very first time, they're not gonna know, you know, what a maze is, and that there's a hundred of them in a hundred different games, and there's different ways of doing them. They're just gonna see a maze, and they're gonna be puzzled by it. It's just an, it's another puzzle, and if done well, it's a good thing. And there's many other types of puzzles like that that the community has sort of scoffed at and said, don't do this anymore. Um, we have some bylaws that people have written. Um, but I think uh, for the most part, all of those things are good if they're well done. Is there a type of game? Um, there, there's a couple of things in there. One, the, the community of people who are involved in the hobbyist community of interactive fiction, people who build the tools, people who use the tools, people who write most of the games. Um, we sort of circle around each other's work 
and uh, we critique each other's work. And, and what you're saying is there is a small set of people who do the critiquing uh, and, and have their pet peeves about um, certain aspects of IF, like building mazes or treasure hunts or using fantasy or science fiction as a backdrop. Um, there's a lot of things like that that um, have become somewhat of a taboo within the community. Now, is, does that mean that they're taboo completely? No, that just means that they're, they're, the, the, w there's an incestuous nature to the community in that, you know, I, I don't like what you're doing, so then you don't do it anymore. You don't like what I'm doing, so I don't do it anymore. And it actually stifles probably a great deal of innovation. Um, now, some people have combated that. Some people say, you know, I don't believe this. I think science fiction or fantasy is a really good genre. I love it. Um, I think the, the, the challenge is just to do it well. And some people have, have done that. They've, they've taken those genres and they've actually gone back and done them well. Some people have created puzzle fests. Uh, Emily Short created uh, Savoir Faire. And really, it, it is a traditional IF game. You know, you wouldn't know the difference from 20 years ago. But, and it's a puzzle fest. And it's a very complex and, and, and hard game, um, but it's very well done. And But if it hadn't been very well done, it would have been, uh, instead of winning awards, it would have been ridiculed by the community. And that's really the key. Um, the, there are some things that the community doesn't like. Uh, and my interest in competitions was, and, and actually almost everything I do, around interactive fiction is to promote it, is to push people to write better code, write, write more code, um, to make it easier for novices or non-programmers to uh, get involved in IF and, uh, uh, you know, it, and just, just to bring it to a wider audience. A, uh, uh, an urge to keep coding. And two days after, um, you know, the beginning of the comp, more or less everybody's judging, you can't talk about anything. I said, does anybody want to do this? Um, and I, and the other part of it was too, is I wanted people to just, you know, let's, let's code really fast and see what comes of it. Let's see what happens. What, 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 what are the, what are the downfalls of, of trying to write IF really fast? Uh, and we found out right away that there are some pretty serious downfalls. Like you can't build a lot of rooms. You can't really do puzzles. Um, you can do poetry. You can do uh, prose. Um, what, um, my interest has always been to uh, promote or excite people about IF and get them to work on it a little harder and a little faster. Uh, IF is a it's a it's a difficult thing to to get into. It's difficult to learn how to program it. It's difficult to learn how to write against it. And I really wanted to push people a little bit. I wanted to say, okay, you have three days or you have 10 days or you have 30 days. Get something done. Do something. And, and the, the, the strange thing in the IF comp, the annual comp actually proved this, is that competitions bring out more people, bring out more games, and it improves people's skills. And I just thought that, you know, if I created more... Uh, competitions. Now, there are other people that have done a lot of competitions. I think actually Adam Catter was the one, the first one that did a, did a mini comp. Um, I've done a comp. And I think in hindsight, the reason I did it is because I just have a passion for doing that. For It's a promotion of IF. And I've learned over the last seven years that it's sort of a calling. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to write a great game that wins awards. I don't know if I'll ever... Um, be a great reviewer of games. Um, I've written some games that have gotten, you know, some casual notoriety. Um, nothing that's won an award or anything. Um, and I, I, I mean, I don't really have the time. I have five kids. But there's one thing that I can do, and that's that I can promote IF. And I, I feel very strongly about promoting IF to a, a wider audience. I have an eight-year-old daughter. I want to share it with her. And she, she's written games with me and she already loves it. So um, I know that there's a wider audience. And I think that that's, that was sort of inside of me when I published the Informed Designers Manual. It was sort of a, uh, it, it was just a notice to me that this needed to be done and I, I needed to get it out to as many people as possible.
I think that just comes out of my passion for interactive fiction. I, I, I felt very strongly that it was so well done. And I had so much respect for Graham. Graham is an interesting guy. I, I, I love the guy. Um, I love everything he does with interactive fiction, but he's really hard to uh, hard nut to crack. And 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 the, it, the sad part is he doesn't really come. He doesn't really commune with us anymore with the community. And he used to in the early '90s, early to mid '90s. He wrote games regularly. He communed on the Usenet news groups regularly. Um, he interacted with people, and I don't know if he ever answered his email. I think that's one of everybody's pet peeves. But he did commune with with the IF community. He he was there, and when he posted, it was almost like it it, it was it was like getting up in the morning and going to your newsreader and reading something about and, and seeing there's a post from Graham. And it was always funny, heartfelt, made you feel good, um, and obviously conveyed some information. And, I mean, I think one of the most brilliant things he ever did is somebody, somebody was mentioning different kinds of um, authors or, or, or directors or something like that. And it was, it was like different ways of, of, of writing prose. And he comes on and he writes prose in like six different mannerisms. And, and it was just, it was brilliant. I mean, I don't think anybody else would even thought of doing that. Um, and uh, I forgot where we're going. Do you find, have you seen any, observed any traits? Not to pat myself on the back, but I have to if I'm going to inclu include myself in this group. But yeah, I, I think there is a trait and I think it's intelligence. I think there's, I, I'm at the bottom level of it, but I think the rest of the people that are writers and, auth and, and creators of games are extraordinarily talented people in some way, shape or form. Um, it may actually not be writing or programming, but they have an ability somewhere in them, a passion and an ability that sort of keeps them, that puts them at a little bit higher intelligence or they are just smarter or they're better at something. And uh, then, you know, then the average game player is just looking for, you know, hoot and holler. But I think there's some of us that are just looking for our brain to be, you know, we want something more. When I watch a movie, I want something more. I would rather watch a movie that tests my emotions and my intelligence than try it. Well, actually, that I mean, that's my preference. I do like movies that make me forget everything, too. Um, but I think that, that that writer and and game author combination is almost universally someone who has a higher level of intelligence and is looking for entertainment that will impact that intelligence. And I don't know how a nicer way to say that because I don't want to offend anybody who doesn't feel like they're smart. But uh, I just think that th th we're, we're looking for something. We're not easily amused. Okay, maybe it's our problem. We're not amuse easily amused and we're just looking for something to make us laugh. And IF makes us, it makes us laugh and, 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 in, a, in a way that other things don't. Yeah, I think like 75% of people think they're above average. I think that's the, that's the <laughs> um, and only 2% are? Yeah. Um, so, I think. Amazingly, the annual IF comp hasn't changed at all. I, I don't think it's changed at all since day one. So, uh, the, the, whoever wrote the rules originally, I think it was uh, um, Kevin Wilson, um, wizard on IF Mud. Um, I, I, he had, the rules were pretty clear and pretty good. Can, you can't use copyright material. You can't. It's got to be an original work. It's got to be playable. You know, in two hours, which is uh, subjective. But um, you know, it has to function, and it has to be in by a certain deadline. And you know, it's pretty simple rules. So um, those have all worked well. I think there's been arguments about the annual competitions rules, and I think because of those arguments, some other competitions have sprung up. Uh, actually I created one and so did Adam Catter. He created the spring thing and I created the, I was running a website called the IF which was an attempt to categorize all of the IF 
and actually to allow people to sort of come in as a community and and have like a home page on on the website uh and uh it did okay i think I, at the at the peak i had like 150 people on iflibrary.com and so i started a competition too 6 months away from the annual comp and and the one rule that always bugged me was you can't talk about anything um and there was some go round about it and i don't i never got much traction but i always thought that um it should be just like the oscars or just like anything any other competition where Let's let's talk about this stuff. Let's talk about each other's games during the judging. Let's say, you know, this game was great because of this, this, and this. This game was terrible because of this, this, and this. And and I think you might come out with a different response. Not entirely. The top five are still probably going to be the top five. They might come out in a different order, though. And I think that might be healthy. I think there is a... This goes back to the the nature of the community is closed and i think the annual competition mimics that in that it is closed it it once you release the games and for judging and until the voting is done you're not allowed to talk about it you're not allowed to to advertise that you wrote a game and this is why you wrote it you can't give any backstory you can't you know you, there's just no verbiage about the whole thing no voice and that was always one of my frustrations and unfortunately no one agrees with me or fortunately, you know, maybe the competition is fine just the way it is. It is an amateur competition, and I think that, you know, if you gave voice during the judging, that might make it a little bit more. And there is money. There are prizes involved. People donate $500 prizes. So there, there, there's some, there is some competition to it. I mean, people are vying for serious prizes. Uh, so I guess, you know, you can go either way. But I, I, I just think, I believe strongly that, that giving a voice to things is, 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 a, is a good thing, not a bad thing. Um, other competitions have popped up because of those rules, um, but those rules have never changed. Um, I think Adam had uh, a different set of rules too, and um, I think his big critique of the annual comp was that there was a lower level of quality that came in at the bottom level. So you'd have 40 games, the bottom 10 games would just be horrible. They, you know, one room, there's no puzzle, it doesn't work. You know, it takes you two seconds to recognize what it is and to close your, you know, interpreter. And I think that frustrated Adam um, extensively. And so he created Spring Thing with the hopes of having sort of like a two-round system where, you know, the first round, the games get sort of played through with a walkthrough and determine whether, they're, whether they qualify. And then the second round, you know, would be the actual voting round. So there, there's been complaints and, you know... We've just, you know, instead of continually attacking the annual comp, we've just gone and created our own. That's where mini comps, mini comps come out of a joke usually. And then the speed IF is just boredom. I mean, people just want to, you know, do a, a mad lib of a, a, of a particular, you know, set of criteria. And, you know, we, we, we're on the IF mud and we spend the next four hours or 24 hours writing a game and we put them all up and everybody laughs about them. So, uh. um. Is there a uh... like them? <laughs> but there, you know, still some people who come into Kamis, and that's the first thing they want to do. They want to build a, a game just like Adventure, or just like Zork, or just like uh, you know any number of the games that came back came from before. Um, let's see, maybe people don't typical fantasy. A uh, typical fantasy game has a, a dragon, a, a maiden in distress. Um, you know, you're the hero, uh, puzzle fest. It's a game where at every turn you're trying to figure out something. Um, and you're not really reading the, the, the pros. You're constantly trying to solve a problem. Uh, there are games that go heavy on some subset of what the capabilities of interactive fiction are. Those get labeled very quickly. And, uh, again, it all depends on if it was well done or not. You take a Plotkin game. Andrew Plotkin writes puzzle fests, but everybody loves them because he also writes well. And he, he may go too far at times, but it's allowed because he does a good job. Whereas other people write puzzle fests and they don't do such a good job. And it's going to get labeled a puzzle fest and not a very good one. 